from Montana's News Leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Janelle Slagle, the nation's leading expert in infectious diseases gets real with Montanans today. Dr. Anthony Fauci, advisor to the president, spoke on the importance of the COVID-19 vaccine, but he also responded to Montanans who are scared and suffering from the virus. Well, Dr. Fauci touched bases with Montanans with help from the University of Montana. MTN's Katie Miller reports. I don't think anyone could have imagined that things would have been this bad for over a year. We're making a lot of progress now, but we have been through a very, very extraordinary and historic experience that isn't over yet. On Wednesday, Dr. Anthony Fauci spoke directly to us Montanans, headlining the annual Mansfield Lecture. I hope people value the chance to hear from uh, the, the, the world's leading ex expert on infectious diseases. Montanans asked questions about the virus, like this Missoula boy still suffering from symptoms after contracting COVID months ago. My heart races and I can't read or write. No, no other doctors can help me. Can you help me? Fauci told the 13 year old some people have spontaneously recovered from lasting symptoms. So let's hope that as we get forward in the coming months, that those things that are bothering you so much will self correct. Confederated Salish and Kootenai Tribes Chairwoman Shelly Fiant asked, What is your response to our tribal community members who ask us? How do you expect us to trust a vaccine being sent by the federal government? Right Fauci says you have to respect the people who have that skepticism. Fauci says to do that while still presenting the scientific facts. It has been shown to be highly efficacious and really quite safe. And Fauci says the more people that get vaccinated. When are we going to be back to normal? The sooner we can reach herd immunity. If we can convince them to get vaccinated and get to that 70 to 85 percent of the population vaccinated, I believe that by next fall, middle to end of the fall, that we can begin to approach a significant degree of normality. In Missoula, Katie Miller, MTN News. Thanks, Katie. Now, Fauci does emphasize other factors like COVID variants and vaccine hesitancy could slow the time to reach herd immunity. Well, today, Governor Greg Gianforte delivered his assessment of the COVID-19 pandemic and vaccination efforts across the state. He thanked Montanans for a downward trend in cases after a surge at the beginning of the year. February is also the first month since August that hospitalizations dropped under 100. Gene Forte says the state is doing a good job getting vaccinations out, but again, he says Montana isn't getting the doses it should. Senators Tester, Danes, and Representative Rosendale joined the governor this week in calling upon the Biden administration to send more vaccine to Montana. We can administer half of our weekly allocation of first doses in one day and we've done it. The problem remains that we aren't getting our fair share of vaccines. Now, following the call for more doses, Missoula County was recently added to the federally qualified COVID-19 vaccine program. Gene Forte says he has not been given a clear reason as to why Montana is the 45th in the nation for the vaccine allocation per capita. Well, Republicans in the Montana House advanced a bill today that says essentially businesses cannot be required to enforce local public health mandates, such as wearing face masks in the current pandemic. Well, the bill sponsored by Belgrade Republican Jedediah Hinkle says no local government or health board can issue an order that denies a customer access to a business's premises or services. So if a city or county has to mandate to wear face masks or limit customer numbers or hours, the business cannot be held accountable for not enforcing that order. The House endorsed the bill on a 66 to 34 vote with all but one Republican in favor. Democratic opponents say the bill essentially destroys public health initiatives and could make it difficult or impossible for government to respond to future pandemics. Now, the measure faces a final vote in the House on Thursday before advancing to the state Senate. Well, despite Governor Greg Gianforte lifting the statewide face mask mandate, today the Transportation Safety Administration is quick to remind Montanans you must still wear face masks in airports, 
on buses and in rail stations. And when you get on that plane train or passenger bus system, keep your mask on. This federal mandate remains in effect until May 11th. Failure to comply can prevent your travel and result in fines ranging from $250 to $1,500. Now here in Billings, local leaders are studying what a possible bike share service could look like in the city. A bike share offers rented bikes that people typically use for short daily commuter trips or recreation. Well, Q2's Mitch Laggy brings us more on the estimated $1 million price tag. Around 2019, the Billings City government was approached by multiple bike and scooter share companies looking to set up shop in Billings. Now, the results are in from a $44,000 study that hopes to guide future policy on bike share in Billings. The study looked at what type of ride share, either bike or scooter, would be best for Billings. The study also looked at who would run it either the city, a private company, or a combination of both. It also found the best location to start a possible bike share service. The study found that a bike share would provide a better service over scooters, which other municipalities have banned after altercations with pedestrians on the sidewalk. Alta Planning and Design, the firm that authored the study, found that the downtown corridor and Montana State University Billings area the best place to start a bike service, with 140 to 200 bikes at 17 stations. In their Tuesday meeting, Billing City Council members were concerned with the estimated $1 million cost to start up the service, and an estimated $300,000 per year for maintenance. Bike share services aren't designed to be profitable, rather to provide a service to the community. There is a possibility for a private company to take on all of the operations, but usually a city government shares some of the burden of cost. Now, all of this does not mean that Billings is getting a bike share service anytime soon. Rather, the study gives guidance on what policy should be moving forward. The bike share study is slated for approval at the Billings City Council's next meeting on Monday. After that, the study will go for approval at the Transportation Policy Coordinating Committee, which is made up of members from the city government, Yellowstone County government, and Montana Department of Transportation. Reporting in Billings, Mitch Laggy, MTN News. All right, thanks so much, Mitch. Now you can read the full study through a link found in this story at ktvq.com. Well, the Billings Fire Department says its call volume is steadily increasing, and the recent cold snap seemed to intensify that. But as Q2's Andrea Lutz reports, it's not the only obstacle the agency is coping with. Even though temperatures are warming up, it doesn't necessarily mean that Billings Fire Department is thawing out. In fact, their equipment has taken a real toll in these recent sub-zero temperatures. That combined with a fire engine out after a crash last week. Unfortunately, a lot of structure fires and now we've just changed gears and now we're dealing with a lot of slick roads. We've been fighting fires. The last couple of fires we have is 18 below. With over a week of straight frigid temps, Battalion Chief Kevin Johnson says 2021 is starting off with a blast. You know, we're averaging 48 calls a day right now from the first year. You know, we ran over 18,000 calls last year, which is almost a thousand increase from the year before and a thousand before that. So it's just a lot more miles and hours. And wear and tear. Gaskets get torn, air packs get really beat up because they're full of ice and they're thawing. Trucks and crews are running constantly to calls, giving little time to rest and recoup. Trucks are always being chained up. It's rough on the suspension and occasionally we do get those cables break. They're running 24 hours a day. They never get to come back and warm up. And the recent crash of a fire truck doesn't help after it tipped on icy conditions while heading to a crash. We don't have a reserve pumper right now. Thankfully, nobody was hurt. And thankfully, Johnson says the apparatus was up for replacement in a few years anyway. And he says scheduled maintenance will now have to wait. So currently, we have two trucks down at Fleet right now. And there is some preventative maintenance that maybe won't happen now because we can't afford to take it offline. And so that does catch up with you in the end. And just when you thought a slight rise in our temperatures would smooth it all out. To be honest with you, it's probably going to get busier. With a whole new set of emergencies. Unfortunately, a lot of pipes, a lot of sprinkler systems froze and you don't even know they're leaking. The roads weren't as slick as they once were. You almost felt like they were a little bit grippy. Now we've got layer after layer of ice. We had a little bit of new snow this morning. In Billings, Andrea Lutz, MTN News. All right, thanks so much, Andrea. Up next on tonight's MTN 530 News on Q2, the catch of the day rolled into the Magic City. We'll dish out the menu and meaning. Hi, everybody. Scott Breen here. Coming up in sports, a guide to Montana's first ever girls all-class state wrestling tournament fires up Friday in Lockwood.
The Stockman Bag Weather Camp shows that the visibility is still down a bit, but the temperatures are up a bit. 24 for the high today after starting off in the teens. Forecast details are coming up 